met better. <gasps> oh dear. Did you see the haul? Like, did you see all the stuff I've got to talk about? Let's, we better get cracking. Hello and welcome to the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new, I actually have a ton of new viewers. Thank you so much. Hi, how are you? Um, I am almost at 5,000 subscribers on YouTube and I just hit 5,000 subscribers on, on or followers on Instagram. So I'm going to have a giveaway and I haven't thought about this, so I have to think about it and then get back to y'all. But, um, oh, ooh, ooh, yeah, there's going to be a giveaway. Stay tuned. I might decide what to do during this, this podcast. I might force myself or I might not. Who knows? Now, I've been really busy. I've got loads of things. This is going to be a whole heavy episode. I am sorry. I'm going to leave it to the end. I generally don't like haul heavy episodes, but I really want to talk about the vendors that I met um, because I've never heard of a lot of them before. And I think it's really awesome. So I went to Barcelona Knits Festival at the weekend and it was amazing. It is Spain's first indie dyed yarn festival, kind of luxury yarn festival. You know, the ones like um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival and a woolen and you know those type of shows and it was unbelievable unbelievable there were incredible vendors there incredible from all over the Iberian Peninsula there was like there was Norway that's not how you pronounce it. Norway that's how you say it there was no from at uh, Norn yarns from Norway I didn't get any of her yarn but I did get a badge but I am gonna get some of her yarn oh anyway whatever I was there as a podcaster as not an official podcaster. I just really wanted to go. I was there uh, to take classes. I took three different classes from Isabel, one from Isabel Kramer, one from Hohi Locatelli, and one from um, Julie Nets in Paris about brioche. So Julie Debrou. And it was amazing. I'd never taken a class before and I'm so glad I did. It was invaluable. I feel so much more confident about just um, a lot of things which is great and I got to hang out with super cool people too so that was really nice um, I got to fangirl obsessively over my um, most favourite person Hohi Locatelli she's beautiful and she's an incredible teacher and endless energy apparently she taught three classes in one day which was pretty intense like they're three hour classes that's nine hours and it was pretty much she got maybe a half an hour in between each class it was unbelievable she just powered through and the class at the end was like as if she just woke up that morning just bright and breezy um yeah she's done a huge amount of traveling um she did her photography in barcelona for the new interpretations volume in 2019 that's coming out and um she she also flew over to Berlin to the new shop Yarn Over Berlin. Um, so and she did it all in the space of maybe six days. Like, and, then, and she flew back to Barcelona then. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, like that is a so much traveling, so much work. And she was just bright and breezy the whole time. Also, she was, you know, she really just is such a lovely person. Oh. <laughs> I miss you, Julie. Joey and Julie and everybody. I'm having the the festival, the yarn festival come down really hard right now. I also just got off a night shift, so hence the lipstick to distract from my eyes. But glasses also do that. God bless glasses. You've no idea what's going on behind here. Right, <clears throat> let's stay on focus, stay on target. Remembrances Pottery Mug and some beautiful tea by David's Tea. I think it's fresh, fresh, berries fresh or something. And my friend Carmen sent it to me in an advent last year or this year. It's not, not last year yet, guys. We're, we're not there yet. It's November the 20 something. I think it's, oh, it might be Thanksgiving today. It's Thursday the 24th or something. 
So yeah, happy Thanksgiving, happy Turkey Day, happy whatever you're having yourself, getting together with your family and being all happy. Great. Good for you. Um, I have no idea where to start. Let's start with the knitting. Okay, let's start with the knitting. So, I finished an object. Oh, yeah. Hi, this is my finished object. This is my hitchhiker shawl. I finished it when I went to Edinburgh, or oh, when I went to Barcelona. This is, it's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. This is a one skein shawl. It's a project. It's a shawl by Martina Bem. It's not blocked because I just threw it on straight away. I knit it out of the um, Edinburgh 2017 colorway of Nora George Yarns uh, called Thistle. And this was in her Donegal tweed base. So there's a few extra little tweedy bits and it's absolutely beautiful. And it's the most Scottish thing ever. I'm so glad I have it done for Edinburgh 2019. I mean, it only took me a year, two years. This is the Hitchhiker Shawl because when you knit it, you're supposed to get 42 teeth. I got 40 teeth out of one skein. Um, and I think most people have trouble getting 42. So um, that I'm, I'm totally fine with it. And it's 42 because the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the answer to the question of the universe and everything is 42. And it was super easy, super quick knit. Actually, it wasn't. It was six months in the making, but it was really easy. And I was only knitting it at um, like knit nights and stuff. So it's not like um, I was working on it all on, on its own, you know. But once I got past like the, I had it all nice and I had it to show off my nice new necklace and now I've messed it up. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so it's um it's easy. It's a knit on the bias. You start from one edge and you knit all the way down. And um, am I going for a cowl situation? What's happening? I generally just wrap it around like a scarf. It is really nice. I just got this necklace from Yarn Street. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> but isn't it pretty? I love it. This is going to be my new festival necklace. Um, yeah, so uh, I finished my shawl. I finished it literally as the wheels touched down in um, Dublin after coming back from Barcelona. Um, I had two projects with me. I had started, um, because I was taking a brioche class with um, Julie, Julie Nitz in Paris. It was a fix-it brioche class, so I kind of had to know how to do brioche in the first place, which was a challenge, because I literally didn't. I learned last week. And then I decided, you know what, this one by one row business is just slowing me down and confusing me. So I looked up Sockmetician's one pass brioche method um, on the bus up to up to the airport on Friday morning uh, in the dark. So I learned one pass brioche in the dark on the bus. It's actually like revolutionary. However, I haven't figured out how to do the increases with one pass brioche yet. I don't know how to do that. I also I'm not sure about the setup round. Um, so anyway, sure I might as well talk about it. It's in my little sock bag, or which I had from um, Terry, my cottage number nine, uh, which this was in, and then I put this in. There was a lot of moving about and shaking about because I only brought hand luggage. This is the last of the yarn. That's all I had left and I measured it very carefully. So when I was coming to the edge, <clears throat> when I was coming to the end of my my ball, it was kind of starting to look a little bit thin. Um, I was at this stage and I know that uh, three times the length of what you need to knit is how much yarn you need. So I was measuring out three times the length and then I, I just measured out how many lengths I could get out of the last bit of the yarn and I could get eight. Now I knew that, okay, I needed three for one more row and then I needed four for a stretchy bind off. So then I had one left over, which is this. Uh, four and a bit, like, I, you know, I was overestimating because I hate yarn chicken. So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I do suffer from it regularly on the regular but like yeah so I had one strand and a bit and a foot and a half maybe left over so handy it's really handy to measure um 
when it's only a small little length, you know, there's only that many stitches on the needles, it goes actually quite fast when you just do that. But I just, I don't just do one thing at a time because I'm kind of not that type of person. I, I pretend that I am and then I'm not. And that's fine. So <clears throat> that was my hitchhiker shawl. So I had, yeah, so I just wanted to I'll show you that little teeny, teeny, teeny bit. So I'm using my first ever hand dyed yarns in this project, my two first ever hand dyed yarns. So I first learned how to, how to dye yarns with a friend of mine down in Sydney. Um, her name is uh, Hannah from Circus Tonic Handmade. She's an incredible hand dyer. And I went over to her house and um, we just had a lovely day, just kind of playing in the pots. So I'll show you what I created at that time. Now Hannah's actually started doing classes um, with uh, the Happen Store in Sydney. Um, <clears throat> keep an eye out and look out for them because it looks like so much fun and um, even if you if, you know if you're just interested in dyeing or if you just want to kind of know how it works or you know if you just you don't have to like be wanting to be a dyer or anything like that but anyway so this is my first ever attempt at hand dyeing I tried when I was in Australia and this is I'm actually, this is such a beautiful colour. It's like a, a peachy mauve with speckles of bright orange, bright orange. And then there's like darker areas of blues and there's a muddy, like a, a almost a burgundy colour there, maroon colour. And it's just, I love it so much. There's some black speckles with some mauves as well. Really, 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 really pretty. And um, yeah, so this was kind of caked up, ready to be cast on to be something. Um, but like two years have passed and I've not cast it on. So it was like a, an example, you know, a little like, oh, this is the first game I died. Then when I was traveling back from Australia, I um, stayed at my friend Marsha's house, Marsha from the Fairy Little podcast. I stayed with her house, uh, with her for about a week or about five days or something like that and um, we had a really good time and we actually did a little bit of yarn dyeing there as well and I really wanted to try out a gradient skein but we didn't have like a sock machine uh, or a sock plank so we split up the skein into little little hand like hanks and we popped them in kind of we timed them now the timing was a little bit off because obviously I think I started and I put them in and I waited too long and then I put them in and then I waited and put them in and waited, put them in, waited. And then the dye actually had soaked up by the time I was putting in. And yeah, so we kind of threw the rest in really quickly. So what this is actually is a, um, it's kind of like a shawl gradient, I think. Anyway, I'm having a bit of an experiment with it, but I think they go really well together, don't you? Like, why was I so obsessed with brown? I don't know. I don't know. I love it. I love it. And this is cashmere in it, I think. It's so soft. This is a sock. This is an Australian sock base. A revelry base, I think. In circuits, tonic handmade, possibly. So soft. I don't, I don't remember what they were. They're just, they've been like this for about two years. So I decided, yep, I'm gonna cast them on. You know what I'm going to learn do with them? I'm going to learn brioche with them. <sighs> and you know which one, what, what pattern I decided? Well, I saw this in Pom Pom Magazine. Have you seen Pom Pom Magazine? I am knitting this shawl. <laughs> Sojourner. Sojourner Truth. Um, I went through the whole magazine. I did a little review in my last podcast. If you're interested, you can pop on over and have a little look. But it's all brioche down the centre, down the triangle. And this lovely mess stitch with some welts there and then this rib. So I accidentally started... Um, let me show you. I started with the wrong colour on the front. So I did want it to be quite similar to that in that like the, the light colour was the main colour. So you'd have the, the ridges separating out. But it kind of went the other way. But by the time I realised I was like, nope, not ripping back. Because it took me about 19 times to just cast on. Never mind. 
rip him back and start again. So this is it. <gasps> so this is the front. Now I wanted it to be the back, but we have we we are where we are. Okay. So this is the lighter color, and if you see the ridge is not connected with the increases. On this side, it is, but it's harder to see because it's a it's a darker yarn. It's a darker yarn. Or the contrast. If you see the the rib, the ridge is coming down in the dark color. Oh, I don't really care. I mean, I do care deeply, but I'm not going to rip it out <laughs> because I care more about not ruining it. Ah, but I really like it. So it's got this. It's really low contrast and but it has such a like a a 3d textural effect it almost looks like it is one color but um then you get these like bright pops in between you see those v stitches there um the increases are fine they're just yarn overs really like knit yarn over knit yarn over knit and the one thing with one color and then on the next round you you just continue your brioche thing um, yeah, but I'm not sure how to do it in one in one pass brioche. If anyone has a link or details on how to do increases and decreases in one pass brioche, send them my way. Thank you very much. I haven't actually gone actively searching because I was busy, but you know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm about here. This is where I am. It looks like a stingray. Stingray situation. Ow. Or not really. It hit my glasses. It sounded loud. But I'm using Chow Goo's. I'm using a four millimeter Chow Goo needle and I'm loving it. So um, uh, in Julie Knits and Paris's brioche class, it just kind of made me realize the structure of brioche and how it works. So if you come across something and when you're actually knitting it, if you can see something is wrong, how to fix it then, as opposed to having to go back and try and fix it later. There's all, she also did um, tell me quite, a, tell me quite a lot about how to fix things like this, which I've just seen. This here, which is just basically the little shawl that goes over the stitch has just dropped behind it and it's just causing a little strangulation. Um, I'm not entirely sure I'm brave enough slash care enough to go back and do that, fix that. It is the only mistake though. I think I might have to. I could do it, Julie, can't I? Yes, I can. Okay. Very exciting. So, um, you may be able to see where I changed from one pass brioche to two uh, to from from two pass brioche to one pass brioche um, and I don't know if you'll be able to see but let's show you my really messy desk it, you can see it when the light shines through it this here see that line there again I don't care enough to change it so but I yeah I yeah I yeah So sweet, look at it. Ooh, yes. That's the stuff. Oh, wait a minute. I gotta get a good, a good twist angle. Ooh, yeah, baby. Anyway, super fun, super fun. And I've got to get back into it now so I don't lose it, lose the plot. The problem with the colors that are quite that are low contrast is that sometimes the lighter color has this blip of the maroon which looks very similar to the brown so I have to be super careful when I am knitting it and um, that I don't make a mistake um because they look so similar but hey oh spaghettios oh I could fix that oh I've seen it I can fix another one there's another mistake <gasps> you see that see that little Hang on, maybe on my face. Yeah, that little one there. It's missing its little shawl. It's got a shawl here. There's there's two shawls there. It didn't go up and over. Oh. Hang on, is that the whole problem? All the way along? Oh no, there weren't shawls in the first place. Learning. 
Right. Crack on, Grace. Okay. So that's where I am with my sojourner, my beautiful sojourner shawl. I need, oh gosh, uh, things are getting out of control here in Babel's headquarters. Out of control. I may need to do a, um, a D stash or a, a severe tidy. Uh, we'll see. Mm. Mm. Yum, yum. This is my lipstick. It's inspired by my friend Albert from the Barcelona Texidoras or PCN Texidor. I don't know. I can't speak it. It's the Male Knitters Club of Barcelona. They're incredible people. Super fun. Super fun. Also, I think he can put up, put up, pull off the red lipstick better than I can. I don't care. We'll do it anyway, won't we, darling? Okay, carry on. Now, where am I? Knitting. So they're, they're the only two projects that I brought to Barcelona. And I probably should have just brought one because I did no knitting actually on the brioche because I need serious concentration. But I brought it to show and be like, look what I did, Julie, look what I did. I may need to Skype her about the edges. Um, I'm, My edges are a little bit messy. Let me show you just one more time. Yeah, my edges are a little bit like, ooh, they feel super loose and kind of wibbledy. Uh, so I forgot to ask her about that when I was sorting it out. We were doing no edge brioche. Ooh, scary. Um, but yeah, I was actually happier with no edge brioche than with this kind of messy loose edge. Anyway, inside. So... I got home then and I've been, uh, oh yes, yeah, so I took two more classes. I took the Julie Knits in Paris class and then I took a set in sleeve workshop with Isabel Kramer. So um, set in sleeves are when you do a jumper and then you um, you knit the, um, the sleeve. So what I'm wearing here is a, is a raglan sleeve. No, sorry, my vest is kind of bunching up there. So it's a raglan sleeve. So you start at the top and then you just increase every second row. So your stitch count's changing all the time. So with an, a set in sleeve, which it turns out is what I'm doing for James's jumper. I wish I knew these things before I just kind of throw myself into it. So a set in sleeve is where you, uh, you, either knit from the top down or the bottom up and you knit the front and back um, flat and then you join them together or you knit the bottom in a tube and then you separate them cast off stitches here and do a little quick decreases very quick decreases for just under the armpit and it kind of comes up and over and settles on the top of the arm here I think I need to go up a little bit more because it's I'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, yeah, so the class was incredible. <laughs> I didn't do my homework um, because it, I didn't get access to the, the notes, but that was my fault for not hunting, hunting things up. And let me see if I can give you this without giving you the juice. Juice of the class. Ooh. That sounds inappropriate. So a set in sleeve is basically where it fits right in here. And it was so much fun. We got to try it out, we got to test it. We got some excellent formulas on how to pick up pick up stitches all the way around and then start doing short rows. And then how to decrease this extra little bulk here that I get in most place, most jumpers. And actually it really bugs me. Um, so there was some excellent hints and tips. So with a set in sleeve, it comes down and then in across that way. So you can get a little bit of excess fabric here. Um, so she was saying that, um, th to pick up like less stitches down here and more stitches on the top. And that actually helps. Or pick up the stitches down here, but then decrease them very fast, just in this little triangle, not underneath here. Keep all those stitches on. She's great. She's really, really good. Um, so we got so much. We got a little uh, for our own calculations. We got our gauge. She got. There's a little, um, little technique there that we get. We she gave us to um, work it out for ourselves. You know, fantastic course, fantastic. 
Yeah, so you start off with something like this and then you're working in the round to get something like this. So good, so good. Yeah, so I really enjoyed that and it gave me like basically the light bulb moment for what I needed to do for James's jumper. So, mm, I, right. <coughs> I bought this little notebook as well, which was like life changing. I bought this book at, um, where am I? I brought this little book at uh, Atlantis Books in Santorini in Greece. It's a hand-bound book. I think this is machine stitched. But um, it's a beautiful little book and it had little segments in it. So I put different segments in each class for the three classes. It's perfect. So this is going to be my little designy type book. <clears throat> so then um, uh, I was, after the first class, after the Isabel Kramer class, I went to try to get into the marketplace. I hadn't got into the marketplace yet. And <laughs> it was like the line was so long at 12 o'clock in the day, like half 12, mad. So I went away and I, um, I went and I had a cup, uh, at lunch with, uh, Madeline from Keng Fisher Knits. Absolutely lovely girl. Really. Oh, I love her. And she's got a couple of beautiful patterns. Also, I'm really glad I met you. You're such a, just so easy to talk to, easy to get on with and really funny. So I think you're nice. And then she was also hanging out with Julie, um, who is, um, uh, who he's, um, kind of, what's the word? Virtual assistant? She works really closely with Julie, uh, or with Hohi, and um, just, she, she lives in England, um, so they communicate a lot by email and stuff, but she's just so knowledgeable, and she got some absolutely gorgeous kind of greys and brown kind of tonal yarns. Absolutely gorgeous. So nice. Um, so that was really nice to see her. And I didn't, I didn't know, I kind of just hung on. <laughs> I just kind of like, I was outside the venue just like looking at the line and then I think my line came up to me, King Fishnets came up to me and she said, um, she was like, oh, Grace, hi, how are you? And I was like, oh my God, who, hi, you know. And uh, then I was like, she was like, we're going for coffee, we're going for lunch because this line is ridiculous. I was like, can I come because this line is ridiculous. And then um, I saw Julie as well, Julie Nitz in Paris. She was out um, just seeing her low of all up and down the line. So um, before I met Madeline, I was kind of up and down the line as well, just like checking out people's beautiful knits and taking some pictures. I saw some absolutely gorgeous fading points and they were done by two twin sisters and they're so pretty. I really want one, but it's so much knitting for something that's not a garment, but it's so pretty. Oh. I could totally make a fade. So many things there would make a fade. 17,000 fades. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Ah! So, <clears throat> went for lunch anyway, and oh, there was another girl there, but I didn't catch her name or her <sighs> Instagram. She was like really into like really bright teals, bright colors, pinks, and kind of fluffy. It's just so interesting to see everyone's different tastes and yarn and how <clears throat> we really don't have to, there's no, there was no judgment on any purchases or any kind of color combinations because it worked for the person who's knitting it. You know, like it doesn't matter what you like color wise or texture wise or, you know, it really doesn't matter because we can all hang out together because we were all just knitting. So you know, that sort of like around the table, there were so many different types of tastes, but you know, it was, it was really lovely to see it and to see how it worked with everybody. That was really nice, but I didn't catch your name. I'm so sorry if you watch this. Um, yeah, so I was, I was actually a little bit nervous. I was really nervous about Hohi's class because I love her so much. The reason that I went to Barcelona is because I saw that Hohi had announced it on her podcast, on her, um, on her journal. And I literally, like, I stopped watching it and I went and booked my tickets to Barcelona. I was like, I'm going. If there's any chance in hell I can get a class with Julie, I'm going. Then, of course, the tickets were released when I was working. And then of course, 
I I selected the uh, Hohe's class and then I selected two others and then I went to check out and Hohe's had sold out by the time I was like no so but then she released another class and it was a third class on the day like I was saying like really intense and I thank you so much for opening that class I really appreciate it. I know it was like tough tough to do it but I really appreciate it it was so wonderful to get the chance to go and see you and she actually tagged me on Instagram she's like Grace I'm sorry you know I've opened another class I was like ah! Ah! so I got in right there I was like straight in slide and tackle into the class oh it was so good and it was absolutely amazing it was all about designing your own sweater so um like sweater design an intro to or approach Hoey's approach to sweater design and it was just fascinating to see how um it, it just made everything a little bit more approachable sorry i just had to sort out super secret project that may involve mars hey brownberry Okay, <clears throat> where was I? Oh, he, oh, he, oh yeah. So I was really worried that um, he would be like really exhausted and like, yeah. So I asked Julie, I was like, Julie, what does she like? Like, can I bring her coffee or like what? Like just, just to kind of get her through that last class. Cause it's, I know it's pretty intense. She was like, Coke, Diet Coke. Die Coke, Die Coke, Die Coke. <laughs> so I showed up with a cold Die Coke just before class. And like such a teacher's pet. Such a teacher's pet. I was like, like this is the equivalent of an apple, I think, for Hohe. Anyway, so I showed up and I was like really nervous. I was so nervous. Like I kind of stopped getting nervous about these things, but she's just so cool anyway so I saw her coming down and and then I just I saw <laughs> I saw her and I was like hi hello how are you my name's Grace and she was like I know I love your podcast I was like nope nope cannot can't deal you know she was like I, I can't watch all of them now you know but when I do catch them and I'm like stop it stop it now I am literally gonna have a heart attack and I and just like crumble into a pile of mush on the floor so I just gave her the coke and I was like I heard that you like this <laughs> I heard a little a little birdie told me that you might need this to get through the day and she was just like I was like we were both like but she was much more beautiful than me while doing the face. <laughs> and it was it was an incredible class. And she is, if you ever get a chance, try your best to get to her. Now, she is taking a break next year because she's done a huge amount of traveling, which she's totally entitled to because, um, yeah, it's it's pretty intense. She's got a long way to come. And uh, I really appreciate that she came and she added that extra class. Thank you so much, Hohe. Hohe. I'm kind of her personal stalker friend. <sighs> Where was I? Hohe. God bless her. So then what else? Did, what did we do? Oh, yes. There was a party then organized. Um, there was a couple of different uh, things going on. Uh, there was an official party, which I didn't realize was going on. And I had already said that I would head to uh, the Magda party that was organized by Greta Fibers and some of the International Virtual Knit Nights clan. Um, so I, I met up with Eva and uh, did you know that in Barcelona, the um, when it rains, the uh, the... Um, what's the word for it? GPS goes down. So my Uber got like really lost. And I was like, How, where do they put their satellites in Spain? Are they on balloons? Like what, why would a sat, like why would GPS go down when the rain gets really bad? I don't know. Anyway, I knew where I was. So I just hopped out and walked. I was in like 10, like 
everything is so close in Barcelona. I'd say I probably could have walked into the city centre, to be honest. I probably could have. But it was a bit dark and I didn't want to. So I got an Uber and uh, met up with Greta in this beautiful, cat in this gorgeous little Catalan bar. Very simple food, loads of pinchos and tapas. Just pinchos mainly. Pinchos are cold and they're, they have like a little stabby thing through, the, through it. And you, you pinch it and then eat it. Normally bread with stuff on top. And then, I, uh, yeah, Gre so Greta's um, daughter then got me very drunk on Pacharan, which is this gorgeous slow gin thing. I, to I hope it's not slow gin. <sighs> so uh, that was oh, so funny. And then I um, I had met, just wa randomly walked into on the street just outside um, the festival, uh, Anna from the Dunkelgrund podcast, and I've met her previously at EYF this year, and she's just such a lovely, lovely person, so easy to talk to, really nice. I love her so much. So she was heading to um, her, her friend's bar, uh, this kind of gin place called the Elefanta, uh, Pau Knits, and he's actually given up knitting, he's very stressed about the whole thing. <laughs> But we went up and I met Anna's partner and then I also brought, I dragged out, <laughs> I dragged out uh, Lisa from the, from Townhouse Yarns. Townhouse Yarns were there. I, I flew out with them actually. It was really fun. And um, I met up with them and I was their yarn mule for lifting yarns just because I wanted to be near the yarns. So yeah, then, um, yeah, so I dragged Lisa out because, um, I'm a bad influence, apparently. Because Lisa was the person who spoke Spanish. So she was their translator. So she was the responsible one that was supposed to be there, especially on Sunday morning, for talking to people. But we got home at about probably four o'clock in the morning. Oopsie. <laughs> Jenny and Maureen were not impressed. Yeah, so anyway, I didn't have to get up and sell some yarn, so I was in bed until like 10. I was like, this is the best. So I had a class with Julie Nitz and Paris at one. So I went into the, um, <laughs> I went into the, the, the marketplace. It was just literally up the road. It was so handy. But um, I walked in and basically everyone turned around and goes, Oh, we heard about you. And I was like, oh no, what have I done? So, it was so funny. So Greta's fibres were just there, just about two doors, to, like right in the centre. And they were just so funny. They'd obviously told everybody, Townhouse Yarns had told everybody that I was like this crazy Irish person taking people out drinking and so much fun. I remember everything. I did not black out. I was not unsafe. We were fine. Everything was fine. <laughs> <coughs> pardon me so um yeah I had a great night and then Julie's class was amazing I was slightly tired and a little bit sweaty and hungover <laughs> but I learned so much all the same and um, then I went back into the marketplace after Julie's class and did a, my most most of my damage there to be honest because I was weak and my defences were down and the yarn was beautiful. <sighs> so many beautiful things. And then, yeah, I went out to dinner with um, the Townhouse Yarns girls and we had a beautiful Italian just carbs we just needed carbs 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 we <laughs> I think at the point at that point we were just like I want a plate of food I don't want small little plates I want just one plate of food it was incredible it was really 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 delicious they had pizzas I had passed out amazing um and then we met up with um Norn Yarns Tuva and Oslo Knitter and Julie Knits in Paris for cocktails uh, just one, and then we went went back because we had an early flight in the morning. We were we we're actually on the flight. The Tanis Yarns girls and I were on the flight over and the flight back, so it was handy because we could share Ubers and it was yeah it was handy when you could split the money. But all but it was only like a twenty minute Uber from the um from the airport. The airport is right in the city center. 
so easy to get to, so easy to get around. Everything is there around the venue. If they have it in the same place, it's a tiny bit small, I think, for the amount of people that they were expecting. Um, and I heard that the Sunday was a little bit more quiet than the Saturday. Saturday was like really intense. So it like, yeah, I, I it'll be interesting to see what they do next year. It's uh, it's their marketing was unbelievable, I think, because there was so many people there, like so many people. I think they got something like 2000 through the door yesterday or on the Saturday, on the one day, you know, and then 2000 again on the Sunday. But people were a little bit like people had spent all their money on the Saturday, I think. <laughs> But um, no, it was incredible and they got an incredible lineup of teachers. They did really, really well for a first festival. Very impressive. I had the best time. The people and the organizers were so nice. Um, I, I only experienced it from like the attendee side, um, but I really enjoyed it. I would go back in a heartbeat. I'll be back next year, Barcelona. I will, definitely. Hopefully, if I get my time. So, I'm going to talk a little bit now about what I got at the festival. If you're not interested in the haul, thank you so much for watching and I hope you've had a lovely week and I'll see you next week. I am going to be working um, my bum off on my sweater. Oh, this jumper for James, I haven't really done too much work on it. So don't worry, Like I'm just working on the back. I think I've literally only done about this much. Oh no, where's my marker? Oh my God, I've done that much work. I've not even done a whole slanted diamond, useless. So I'm going to be working on this one mainly. Um, I've got three or 70,000 jumpers that I want to make for myself, but I'm not casting them on because I'm such a good girlfriend. <sighs> so um, yeah, I will see you next week if you're not interested in the haul. So haul, let's do it. First thing I bought, what was the first thing I bought? I don't know. First thing I bought. Trailers, I think. Oh no, I'd seen these. <gasps> Self-striping hand-wound balls from Liver Dye Yarn. And they had, they only had a few, like they didn't have that many, so I had to get it instantly. So it's 75, 25, 100 grams, 100, 245 meters. Liver Dye Yarn, hand dyed in, oh, where is it? Milan, ooh. Milan, Italy. So I'd never seen these girls before, uh, but they were so they were so funny. They had these incredible aprons with the correct sayings, like my doctor recommended a high fiber diet, so I got some iron and stuff like that. So um, I just love this kind of gray stripe. Um, I think that would be just really nice to have some gray stripey socks. They had some other colors as well, but they weren't really calling out to me. And I was like, do you know what? This, please. So it'll be really interesting to see if it's kind of more of a gradient. I think it might be. Like it goes from light to grey to light to light to, to light to dark to light to, you know. That's exciting. What else? Oh, I got... So I didn't get much the first day. Oh, I went to Lee's. Oh, I, I met Lee's from Trey Liz for the first time. And I've been talking to Liz for... Uh, ages on the on the on the international virtual knit night on the ivkn um she is based down in greece but god knows how many languages she speaks she was speaking spanish she was speaking french the whole lot so many so many so many languages but this is um i got as it was kind of sock heavy classic but um they're so handy and i'm always going to be knit, knit in socks so i got a sock blank I got a sock blank from Trillis and I got a double sock blank because I knit socks two at a time and it's just beautiful. So this is another 75.25 and oh it was just lovely to to see her and get to hang out with her and oh it's just so pretty look at this. So a double sock blank means that um, it's two strands of sock yarn knit together so when you actually um, knit them up they're going to be egg Identical, 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 but they're gonna be so cool. I love them. So yes, that's gonna happen. I might do some toe ups and try and use as much as possible. It's so exciting, it's such pretty colors. So that is the first, well, 
I'll just go through what I see to be honest. Um, I have some I have some mo well I, I bought some yarn from Easy Knits for the plume shawl, la plume shawl, no I'm sorry on point shawl from by Julie. It's a brioche mohair shawl which is kind of strange because when I first started seeing brioche mohair things I was like Ugh. but now I'm kind of like oh you know. So I got some mohair from Townhouse. Hey, this is so unlike me. How did this happen? So soft. So this is 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. Uh, it is hand dyed in Ireland in the shade Lock and it's Abbey Lace. Look at the lovely rainbow that she's had behind it. It's so nice. The branding is so lovely. So it's got the silk and the mohair blend in there. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that may be going into a shawl. Um, then on the... Oh, I met these guys uh, from... I can't pronounce... I can never say... El Roble Dal de la Santa Mohair. They have 22 mohair goats and their Instagram is Robledal Mohair um, and they're so, so sweet. I got two things from them. I got some beautiful fleece from Diana in these colors, how shocking. But this is Diana, look at her little happy face. There's pictures of the actual goats and they're, they're dyed then with acid dyes, so it's the fleece itself. So I think I'm going to be having a lot of fun playing with those. I might uh, separate them out into locks and do a bit of tail spinning or something. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, um, but it's going to be fun. Art yarns! Art yarns! They also had Guy's Knit for sale, which is the Sockmetician's new book. So, Sock, uh, so Haynes um, teamed up with Sockmetician to create this book, which is all about teaching men how to knit because, um, I don't know, they're very sensitive souls. <laughs> Needed a man to tell them how to do things. <laughs> you know, especially something like knitting uh, when it, it's traditionally a female kind of uh, female. It's observed as a female pastime. So the... Um, seeing it presented from a male's point of view, a representation, it is representation, but um, they need, you know, a little bit of representation in the market. I love it. I love this guy. <laughs> he's, he's actually crocheting, but it's re like, <laughs> the pictures are so funny. They're so good. Oh, this is, I really like this one actually. James was reading this. James was reading. He was, but like a history of knitting with the war and uh, male knitting especially. And then knitting today, he goes into kind of different styles of knitting, circulars, double pointed. You know, he really goes into fantastic detail about it. And there's some lovely patterns in the end. And also this guy is really adorable. I'm like, you know, <laughs> there's some really good photos in here. I love them all. I love them. Like, oh, there's a fantastic section on how to read your knitting, which is so important. Like, I did not know this. So there's a whole section here about how to read your knitting, the anatomy of a stitch. He goes into like advanced, like what actually creates a stitch and then how to see how you actually can change it, you know? So he shows you like the pearl stitch and how how it works up. Um, you can see you can show you how to identify the little V's. You know this book is actually brilliant for like even I I read it on the bus on the way down and I actually learned so much. I think I it, I think I I had figured it out as I as I learned how to knit myself. But having this book when I would to start would be invaluable I think it would it would just speed up my learning process so much um oh, look at this that's my face all the time this is how I get wrinkles but I haven't got them yet because I'm calm then after I figured it out <laughs> 
so further how to's he shows you how to increase left leaning increases right leaning increases he shows you like really kind of fantastic stuff twisted stitches you know quite good like he shows you how you're able to observe what looks like a, a left leaning increase like if you can see this part I didn't even know that when you saw this part here in your stitch that was actually a make one right you know and he shows you the difference then in a make one left is it leaning to the right or to the left you know like because if you're able to read your knitting your level of knitting just shoots through the roof because then you can uh, you can see where you are in a pattern. You don't have to be like marking it down all the time. You can start developing your pattern a little bit. You can start changing your pattern if you think, oh, that doesn't quite work. Maybe I'll try something different. You know, it just kind of brings you up a notch. Of course, he shows you double knitting and cables and the whole lot and intarsia and color work. And, and then he goes on to, oh yeah, reading your charts. Um, yeah, and then there's some really, really nice patterns, really nice patterns, uh, some lovely, um, just kind of Guernsey style, um, stitch patterns, you know, so it's just knits and pearls and decreases, like that's a huge amount of knitting, you know, for a first pattern, it's perfect. And then this gorgeous cable, which I'm in love with, it's a pattern for a scarf but it's a reversible scarf. Nice. I didn't know that if you just did ribbing and cabled the ribbing, then it's a reversible cable. Thank you, Nathan. This is really nice as well, actually. It's kind of all based on a ski holiday. Like, so you've got this slalom hat. Um, you've got, I love the, um, his fonts that he's using as well, the ski lift scarf the blue run hat, you know, so you've got the blue run, which is like the easy run to start off with. And you've got the ski lift and you've got the slalom. So you're kind of advancing a little bit in your techniques a little bit, um, moving up, you know, kind of working through your patterns. The upright ski socks. <laughs> so he goes through heel flap and gusset and like ribbed socks, which are great for men's feet because um, you knit them quite big, but they actually snug and they can get over the high arches and stuff. So that's great. It teaches like the Kitchener stitch. And then you've got the extra pattern at the back, which is you're picking up the pieces hat, which is using up all your scraps from all the previous yarn, all the, uh, the previous patterns that you have knit. You're using up the rest of your scraps in this hat. So smart. So you only really need like, well, it depends on how, you need, how, how many skeins you need for that scarf. But it seems like everything else is like a one skein project. What's he used? So 200 gram skeins. Oh, so it's iron weight. So they're using larger skeins. So one of those, you know, you could sell it as a kit. That'd be so nice. Anyway, it's really beautifully shot. I want to chill out in a cafe and knit like this. So I have it at home now and James is like, just like, casually looking at it and I was like you already know how to knit James why are you looking at the book he's like I'm just interested in the history you're like mm. like, look how cool he looks hey then damn it but there's um I have to show you my favorite photo are you ready it's a little bit um <clears throat> ballsy look away now if you're sensitive This book is worth it just for that picture. Now, thank you so much, Nathan. It's fantastic. It's a brilliant book. It's so like hardy, like, you know, you could like prop things up with it and possibly hammer a nail, boom, boom, you know, manly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm really glad I bought it. Um, yeah, and it was really nice. To, it was actually amazing to see so many male knitters in Barcelona. It was really lovely to see them all. Ferran Moreno was there and I didn't get to chat to him, but I chatted to him afterwards on Instagram. And he was like, he's screenshotting my, my little vlog that I put. I was like, I was there. I was like, yes, I knew you were there. <laughs> that was really fun. Um, yeah, no, just like so many fabulous male knitters. It was great. 
So um, when I was at the Magda party, I saw that there was this magazine going around and people were signing it. And I was like, what's this? What's all this going on? So they've released a magazine called Bellota and it's a Spanish language magazine, but it's actually, oh, this is issue two. Uh, but I, it also comes in an English language. So I went back the next day and I bought the English language uh, version. And I actually think I met about, <laughs> I met a good 50 to 60% of these designers at, oh, what's this? Oh, there's a PDF available. So handy. Oh. I'll put that somewhere. <gasps> Look at the back of it. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh, such pretty colors. So Balata November 2018 is a lovely magazine based in, I haven't read it in English. I was just looking at the patterns there, but it's based on um, kind of uh, feminist figures in history. And you've got different patterns based on different female figures. And this is a lovely pattern. It's got like increases, just kind of gentle A-line shaping. That's really nice. It's called the Lila Cabellut, which is really nice. Now there's a couple in here that I am obsessed with. I am obsessed with. This one is so pretty. I love the way the increases are done. It's the Coco Chanel version. She shook up uh, Coco shook up the world's women's me women's fashion world by introducing attributes from men's clothing in search of a wardrobe full of comfortable and elegant clothes for women. Comfortable and elegant. Look. Now I met this designer at the booth and I should have got her to sign it, but I didn't. I'm sorry. But look at this beautiful kind of raglan-esque increases there. Absolutely gorgeous. Just the way that they've actually placed it. Very, very, very nice. You know, very subtle, very cute. I like it. I like it a lot. Really nice. So that one is the Coco Chanel card again. And oh, this. This is the Jean Manford. Oh yes. So one day in 1972, Jean just received a call from the hospital. Her son had been beaten while attending a gay protest and the police had done nothing to prevent it. Very afflicted, she wrote a letter to the editor of the New York Post that triggered an avalanche of support. Her message was simple. I have a homosexual son and I love him. That was literally it. Stop beating up men. But this pattern is based on this uh, beautiful woman who's so like, but this cable down the front. So much. Also, this guy. He's nice. I think he was there. He was definitely there. But I don't know who he is. I'm sure the model model is somewhere. Hmm. Oh my god, there's space for notes at the back. <gasps> I love it. Space for notes. Amazing. Uh, you've got so yeah, oh sorry. I was I was getting distracted. I saw the notes and I was very excited about that. <laughs> Look at the doggo. Just, I love that yarn and the cable down the front. It's just so beautiful, really, really gorgeous. And like the crew neck, it's really nice. Really, very nice. You've got some beautiful socks. Oh yes. Um, these ones, these ones are based on Lise Metinier, which is known for her research. She's known for her research in atomic theory and radioactivity. She is, uh, considered one of the most obvious examples of gender discrimination in Nobel Prizes. She worked alongside Otto Hahn for more than 30 years and the scientific community did not understand why he took the prize alone for findings attributed to both. So these are the beautiful socks um, written by Loire Nitz, who is another IVKN member. Hi! <laughs> They're absolutely beautiful socks. So you've got this very simple cable detail up the front which is really quite lovely. Is it the front or the back or the sides? Sides, I think, maybe sides. Hmm, the photography on that could have been a little, little bit clearer. But anyway, so this one. This one is based on Malala. So um, Malala Yousafzai, Yousafzai, dang, I can't remember the how to say it but it's kind of like a wrap coat so you've got a wrap that goes all the way down the back and then 
you've got several sections here which can serve to go around the front as well. So you can wear it so many different ways, like a, a waistcoat or a scarf or yeah, play with your wrap to find your unique style to transform it. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, and this little hat. I just, can I just say how much I love this, this little smiling um, model. She just has the sweetest little face. <laughs> And I think she's wearing the um, the sweater as well from before. I can't remember the name of it. The Jean Manfred. She's wearing the Jean Manfred. Manfred. Jean Manfred. Um, but the hat is so sweet as well. It's really sweet. The hat is Celine Jule. She was born in Russia, where she experienced food shortages firsthand, then emigrated to Denmark at the age of 13. And she was surprised to see the amount of food trashed away and decided to establish the movement to stop wasting food. Set in motion policies in supermarkets very soon, being able to reduce 90% and change the habits of consumers in restaurants. <sighs> I did not know that. She was born in 1980. Yes. There's some, oh, there's a really nice comfy cardigan that looks so cozy in there. It's like a drop sleeve, I think. Or no, it's a it's semi, semi, almost drop sleeve. Little tiny kind of in between drop sleeve and set in sleeve. Oh, look at these beautiful buttons. So nice. So, oh, and these mittens, the Florence Lawrence mittens, which are a colorwork set of colorwork mittens. I love the way they've done it all in the same kind of coloured family. So all these patterns are all kind of in this kind of lovely kind of purple, purple kind of pinky but grey tone, mauve. So Florence Lawrence was a silent film actress, successful in her time, was also a big fanatic of early day cars. She contributed many improvements to them, such as the early turn signals. It was a device connected to the car's rear fender. When the driver pressed a button, an arm raised or lowered a sign indicating the direction of rotation of the car. Following this, she developed a brake signal, which consisted of an arm in which the word stop was written, lowered when the driver stepped on the brake pedal. These inventions were not patented and were developed instead by automobile companies at the time. I love it. I've learned so much and I've just been talking about it for like 10 minutes. I love it. And I love that I met loads of the designers as well. I really love this magazine and it's issue two. I want to get issue one. So exciting. Right. That was the magazine, the books. I'm going to show you the yarns super quick. So Manus, um, Malabrigo Yarns was there and actually they they provided the beautiful yarn for the uh, for Julie Knits in Paris's class. I have been working on this and actually it's enough to make it like a hat. I'm thinking about a woolly worm head hat. I think you'll agree with me. These. There were so many beautiful. They've, they've started working with these. These are a lot of the, I think what they do is they work with, um, when they go to shows, they put out interesting products that they're, and they're just kind of seeing how they'll do. They're kind of super intense speckles, like all over intense, mad, crazy speckles. I love them. I bought two so I could make something. I don't know what, but um, I am in love with them. Malabrigo, unique color. That's what they're called. No good. And it's a Malabrigo sock. It's a twist. So pretty. So pretty. I'm ah uh, in in the okay. Pretty, awesome, sweet. Done that. Done that. Done that. <gasps> a gradient from La Fayfil. I missed out last uh, last year. I went and looked at it like four times at EYF, and I never got it. And I was like, just get it, Grace. I'm obsessed with gradients. I love using them in weaving. They are never a bad thing to own. Great. Um, ooh, Lavendol. This is kind of a very special skein. It's Italian yarns and fibres. This is 50% cashmere, 30% alpaca, 20% alpaca silk, 50 grams, two ply, two ply fingering weight, and the colourway is J. And it's kind of got two plies. One is a light blue and one is a kind of a mauvey grey. This is showing up perfect. Perfect. It is a soft. 
it's they're actually from the cashmere is from the cashmere goat farm and the woman who owns it was there so i was like i'll give it to me I'll give it to me i'm thinking a beautiful soft lacy hat oh my god it's so soft oh my god it's so soft 50 percent cashmere this is probably the first cashmere that i've owned 50 percent oh lavendol beautiful 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 i've heard that they're now being stocked in tribe yarns that new shop in london so right that 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 oh i i really wanted to get something for my postman because he actually is incredible he's shipped a lot of stuff to me put up with a lot of stuff from me so um i got some recycled cotton and um what is it? It's made in Portugal. Recycled wool and cotton yarn entirely spun from pre-consumer waste generated by Portuguese spinning mills. The wool used in this yarn is sourced in Portugal and Spain and or Spain. So this is from Retrosaria and it's a lovely kind of a grey dark grey you know because he wears like a, I think I'll make a hat for him and um, just for the winter. Maybe something to cover his ears because it's wet and rainy up here in Ireland and I think the cotton would be nice as well for kind of warmer climates as well and I just I love this idea that it's all kind of recycled pulled from stuff I love it love it thank you so much Rich's Aria girls they were really showing off their Portuguese knitting style as well sweet um, and then I think the last thing I got was a massive splurge at Townhouse Yarns because I couldn't stop myself. That's just not really. Okay. And I actually want to go and get one more from them. I need to text Jenny and be like, Jenny, give it to me. Oh. So this is in the pool bag sport because I got a lot of fingering weight and I was like, I need to get something that's not fingering weight. This is the Pool Beg Sport in Micromanage and Cloak. <laughs> now there was another beautiful colorway that they had, which was very annoyed that I didn't get, and I can't remember what it was, but it was uh, the, they had a sample there, which I just kind of want. It's the Dre Renee Knits um, Shift Cowl. Now, shift means something else in, in Limerick um, and in Ireland. It means to go and kiss a boy behind a barn normally. So, or the nightclub. <laughs> so it's kind of like... <laughs> but it's a beautiful pattern. I really want it. So the shift cowl. <laughs> I want to get the shift cowl. <laughs> but anyway, as so I bought two of each of these because I was like, I need them. I need them in my life. And then I kind of almost want to... I could totally make a garment out of this. I was thinking about the timely cardigan. I think the timely cardigan would be adorable in this. Um, I think I have enough yarn and it would be a nice kind of solid. I think what I'm missing is I've got a lot of kind of light garments um, knit on kind of four millimeter or five millimeter needles. So the gauge is quite like a little bit loose. So I think using a slightly thicker yarn um, with a with a sport can um would actually make a really nice kind of a warm jackety garment um so yes i think i might be doing that i really want to knit the timely i just i want it so the timely is a pattern by truly myrtle and um who is a who has a podcast called the Truly Myrtle Podcast. She's Truly Myrtle Photos on Instagram and um, a really, really excellent designer based out of New Zealand. So, so pretty. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, that's, this is it now. Mm, kisses, kisses. That's inappropriate. But <laughs> I kind of also want to do the shift cowl as well. So I might have to get the shift kit. I can't stop laughing at it. Stop it, guys. Stop it. This is very serious. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's.
that's going to happen. So this is Townhouse Yarns in her pool bag sport. Um, Townhouse also has, Jenny has an open day for her new studio. She's just after um, getting into a new studio. It sounds amazing. And the open day is on the 1st of December. If you're in Dublin, if you're interested in going along, you totally should. I, um, I will be, I've got another thing that I want to go to um, and I booked into it months in advance. Um, it's a spinning day in Glore. And um, yeah, that's what's going to be happening there. So yes. Now I do have a couple of things that arrived in the post. And these are going to be some prizes for the Epic Along. So something gorgeous that arrived from, let me find it, from Rhonda from, where is she, in Maine? Oh, a second. Yeah, she's on the coast of Maine where her ancestors landed over some years ago from Ulster. So she has a the Wild Wind Farm. This is one of her beautiful sheep. And on the front, who is this? Some of the blackies. Some of the blackie sheep. Oh, they're so sweet. So she has sent over. So Homespun Girls Yarns is the uh, is the brand. So she sent over some beautiful homespun girls from the Wild Wind Farm. Lamb. Strong wool for strong people. Uh, DK weight 230 yards. 100% um, virgin wool grown and made in Maine. Homespun girls at Etsy.com. Beautiful green colour. And then she also sent over some of the Superwash 80% 80-20 Merino Nylon. And so that's what she's dyed herself, but I, the base is not from her farm. So I am going to include both of these beauty, oh, they're absolutely gorgeous. I want to keep them both, but I can't decide. So I'm just gonna give them both to one of the prizes for the Epic Along, it's so hard. I want to keep them both. I have seven things that this could go with. No, Grace, they're so beautiful. So it's homespun girl yarns. And just like, this is from her own sheep. She got it milled and it's a two ply. It's an iron weight or DK weight, DK weight. Beautiful hats or garments. Look at that color. Look at that color. How incredible would that be in a garment? Oh my God, beautiful. So just as a little sample and a little thank you, she sent it over to, to me for the, uh, the Epic Along giveaway. Thank you. And then I also got a beautiful prize. And actually I've been not, I've been cracking into these Tim Tams. I got a beautiful prize or a little, a little gift from the gamer widows.com. What's it say again? They play games. We make stuff. And I feel this really hard because like when James comes in from work, he sits down by his, his computer and he relaxes by playing his computer games. And I sit down and relax by spinning or knitting and, and or things like that. So it's the Gamer Widows on Etsy.com. And they sent me these incredible stitch markers. And it's like a shawl pin. It came in a shawl pin. I'm going to take it out of the packet so you can see. But it's a set of stitch markers. And she also, God bless her. If she does believe in God, I... special ones you've got to put in the freezer and then other Tim Tams which are the original the OG Tim Tams I miss these so bad that's so sad I know I could probably find them if I looked hard enough but getting them sent from Australia it means an awful lot so let me show you what they sent they sent a little a plain stitch marker progress keeper what's this a little boat oh my god I love it what's this a passport a boat oh my god she's made them for traveling she's made them for my travel to the a globe i'm sorry now this is not working out very well but i love it look it's a little suitcase it's a little train oh my god a real big train now oh, nice oh i love this boat I, want I just got on a boat she's right little passport a scooter a scooter I love them I haven't really taken them out properly to have a look I could use them as a like a little a little brooch just to always have stitch markers with me I love them thank you so much you're so sweet to send them all the way 
from Australia. I think they got sent back twice and stuff. It was kind of insane. It's ma it's just really difficult to get stuff sent from Australia. So I really feel like I really appreciate when you do, <laughs> when people do send me stuff. Um, it's wonderful. So they're so beautiful. But some of them, I have, I can't send them all. They're too pretty. I think I'd have to send maybe one or two really special ones. We'll go in to the giveaway if I feel like it. <laughs> I can dare to part with them. They're so pretty. So that's thegamerwidows.com. This is the details there, thegamerwidows.com. Uh, thank you so much, especially for the Tim Tams, but also these, but Tim Tams. I also got, oh, people have been sending me things and I'm like, you don't need to, please, please, you don't have to. But can I just show you this real quick? It's a bookmark. We put the legs pointing up. This is from the um, the wonderful Wizard of Oz Museum in Kansas, and I got this card from a wonderful friend. The Oz Museum was formed founded by my cousin in a small rural Kansas town. I've included a bookmark for your reading pleasures, some Oz and ends, <laughs> and some knitting essentials from Kansas. So let's have a little look. But look, you do like. <laughs> so this is from thank you so much for this this is look at this the Oz passport there's no place like home and it's a little notebook oh cute oh I love this I got some amazing candy um it's American and therefore it's candy. In Ireland and the UK we call them sweets because they're sweet. <laughs> um, so nutrition facts, why would you bother? <laughs> it's just bad for you but good for you. So these are the Wizard of Oz candy coated chocolate. I got some blue ones which were the flying monkeys and I, they're all eaten. I ate them all. So fast they're delicious. I've got, oh this magnet. James loves magnets. <gasps> Outdoor and indoor magnets. I could stick to the car. And then, oh, a flying monkey. A And then some beautiful stitch markers. More stitch markers. Yay! So, so a rainbow. There's the, is that the Tin Man? There's a little rainbow. Some shoes, some red ruby shoes. Oh my God, they're my favorite. Little houses. <gasps> is Dorothy? Oh, little Dorothy. Toto! Toto. Oh my goodness. These are so cool. I, do you know, sometimes when you, when, when I get stuff, I actually put them aside so that I could open them on the podcast, unless they're sweets, in which case I have to tuck in immediately. But um, let me show you some of these close up because they're so pretty. So you've got the lion, you've got the tin man with his axe, rainbow, a little castle, a witch, red shoes, a house that went up in the hurricane, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow. That is the complete set. Whoa, that's awesome. Oh my God, I have so many stitch markers now. I never thought I'd have so many stitch markers. So this is my newest haul of <laughs> stitch markers. I love them. So that was a huge haul. Thank you.